what we're going to do is break these down, John, into a series of uh, short interviews. Oh, that's a good idea. And uh, so if I sound hesitant uh, in asking questions, I'm doing it on an individual basis yeah. so I can edit them a little bit easier later. Okay. Okay? Okay. John, why don't you tell us about your uh, latest recording effort? Okay, John, I'll do that. Well, uh, what can I say about it? There's an album out, Walls and Bridges, as you know. Mm -hmm. and we took a single from it with my fiancé, Elton John, singing in back and playing piano. Really? <laughs> yes, he's at that, that wonderful high note is Elton John's note. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, and uh, he also he's on another track on the album, Surprise, mm -hmm. Surprise. I think I've got Harry Nielsen singing on a song we wrote together. That's the sort of gossip about the album. Super. And uh, the songs really speak for themselves. You know, it's hard to describe it. Um, I'm happy with it. Uh, but I think the group that I put together sounds nice. And uh, we'll see what it does. John, are you doing any uh, backup work for any other recording artists right now? Well, I went down to the West Coast and uh, did a few songs with Ringo, one of which I wrote for him for his next album. And then I flew up on the way back to New York to Caribou and sang on the background of a single that Elton's put now called Lucy in the Sky with Diamonds. Wow. Remember that? That's like an oldie, huh? Yeah, so he, I sang the same part you know, on the chorus I did years ago. So it's like... You know, that, that was the last time I played on somebody else's thing. What's the cut on Ringo's album? Uh, I wrote a song for him called It's All Da Down to Good Night Vienna, which is some kind of Cockney expression, mm -hmm. which means, I don't know what it means, but it's, uh, it's quite, uh, it's, it turned out nice. And we also, I also cut one of his songs with him. I played guitar, and uh, I brought him an oldie but goldie called Only You, which he did rather beautifully. The original Platter song? Uh, yeah, I used to know it more by the Hilltop, though. That was my oh, favorite yes. version, you know? yeah. And, uh, As a matter of fact, I preferred the Hilltoppers. Yeah, I did too. I think I heard that first, but maybe that's because I was in England, you know? Mm -hmm. And I got sort of hooked on that one. And I like the Platters, but it was a bit too stylized for me. I like the Hilltoppers. Jimmy Sacker. Yeah, it was great. That, yeah. Great record, that one of my favorites. So I've been holding the song for years, you know, thinking I'll do it one day, but I never did. So it, and Ringo did a beautiful job on it. We changed the rhythm a bit, but uh, it's beautiful. So that was the last time I played with somebody else. What do you think is influencing your music style right now? Or perhaps I should say, who is influencing your music style, other than yourself, of course? Uh, well, usually my favorite records always have been, and I guess always will be, black records, you know? Mm -hmm. Although I, I admire a lot of white artists, too, you know, and green ones. <laughs> but uh, it's mainly black music I really get off on, you know? And uh, there's so many, you could hardly name them. Stevie Wonder, obviously, everybody. I, I don't know anybody who's not influenced by him. And uh, that, I would say that just records in general, if it's a good record, you know, I like sort of individual records rather than whole albums of people, including myself. You know, I like a little cut here and a cut there. Yeah, that's like I am too. What about the black producers? Who, who do you think is influencing you there? Well, I don't know whether they're influencing me directly, you know. It's all right. so subtle, those kind of influences. But I, I certainly got off on Love Train by the OJs, whoever produced that, Gamble and Gamble Pop, Hunt, it? Right. And I certainly got off on I Can't Stand the Rain and the Al Green stuff from Willie Mitchell's mm -hmm. production. Although I never try and, you know, imitate it, you know, because it's a, it's a separate kind of thing. But it definitely, you know, if I think of records I like, they'd, they'd be on the top of my list, John. Are there any other movie roles in your future? Uh, nothing that's going to get me out of bed, you know. Uh, the, the, the one time I did it without being a Beatle was, it was interesting experience, but it was rather boring just sort of sitting around all the time. I made a film with Dick Lester, How I Won the War, it must have been 67 or something. Mm -hmm. And the best thing that happened there was I wrote Strawberry Fields while I was hanging about. Really? Yeah, so um, it was pretty boring, and, and the offers you usually get are so sort of, they're, they're usually daft, you know. Have you seen Ringo's latest effort with Nilsson? Uh, I saw Dracula, if that's what you're yes, talking about. Yes, yes. Yeah, I thought it was all right. They, they were putting it down more than they should, I thought. I thought it was mm -hmm. quite interesting. I think Harry came off better than Ringo, but... Do you have anything coming up like that in the future? No, no. Uh, you know, um, I wasn't there for that, or I would have been in that probably, crawling around with the disguise on. Uh, if they get into anything else and I'm around, I'll just walk on, you know. But I'm not too interested in uh, just doing it for fun. If it was an interesting part or an interesting film, I'd like it. I think I'd prefer to do the music anyway. Is there any television 
either uh, in the United States or in uh, England in your future? No, uh, the, the, I usually get the, the same kind of offers, but the, the, it's not too interesting. Maybe I should make it interesting myself and do a special or something. Mm -hmm. But uh, I tend to have my most fun actually in the recording studio, which is where I'm doing this uh, radio from now. Are you doing any guest shots on television? Or Carson? Or uh, no, like there's nothing lined up. Uh, the, the, my main exposure has been radio, actually, mm -hmm. because that's where the music industry really lives and survives, you know? I think the, uh, the TV talk shows are nice if you're in the mood, you know? And I'm more in a musical mood than a talking mood, so that's why I find myself either in the studio or, or talking on the radio. John, if you had your entire professional life to live over again, what, if anything, would you do differently? Uh, I wouldn't get so fat. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really don't know. It's a hard question. It's like yeah. saying, "What would you do if you were if you were born a girl or something?" You know, mm -hmm. I have no idea. You know. I probably would just do the same things again, you know. I just maybe wouldn't make so many mistakes, but you can. That's easy to say after, you know, after the horse has escaped. In other words, you're pretty content with the way things have gone so far. Well, I, I'm content. Uh, strange word, meaning that I, I accept whatever went down, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I continue to do so on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, you know, and. Uh, I don't make any judgment on it. I'm just sort of r going along for the ride on Spaceship Earth, you know? Right. And that's about all I can say about it. I wouldn't have missed it for the world, that's for sure. There's been a lot of press, as you well know, about the efforts to deport you. Perhaps a sensitive subject, but mm -hmm. I thought I'd ask it anyway, being as forthright an individual as I am. <laughs> yeah, well, there's no harm in that, John. Uh, the, the immigration is in the same condition it has been for three years, which is that Every so often, a uh, pronouncement comes out that I have 30 days to leave, and a lot of people think I've left, and then my lawyer appeals it, and uh, I seem to stay for a few more months. Mm -hmm. A lot of people ask me, well, what can they do to help? And I never could really answer them, but I think the best thing anybody that wants to help can do is re maybe write to their congressman or uh, somebody like that, because it just shows that there is some interest in it, you know? And uh, I'd like to thank all the people who send me letters with, you know, like a couple of hundred names on or 20 names on as a petition. But I think it'd be better if they wrote individual letters to a congressman because they count one letter as 20, like an advertiser or something. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I, you know, that, that's about all. It, it just seems to go on and on, and it seems very silly, and it's costing me money and the Americans money. I think the latest we heard was that uh, if, in fact, you were to be... Uh, deported, you would wind up on your farm in Toronto. Is there any truth to that? Oh, well, I, that those things, those kind of rumors always come out. I was on a, talking to a radio station in Toronto, and, and they said, have you ever considered living here? And I, in an offhand way, said, yes, I've considered it. You know, I've considered living in a lot of places. But uh, I had no plans or had never even made a move towards it. And the next minute I knew I was going to live in Canada, or in fact, I was already there, I read in one paper. So it's just a matter of, you know, you say one thing, uh, you know, I mean, I like Canada. You know, I've always enjoyed it there. But I've never uh, considered living there all the time as I had in, a, in New York, say. But those things just happen and there's nothing I can do about it. I don't mind, you know, just rumors upon rumors. What, uh, this is probably a, a mucho asked question, uh, but what really caused the the Beatles to go their separate ways. If you could really pinpoint one individual item, is there any one individual item? I think uh, you could really put it down to boredom, you know? Mm -hmm. It was just, we were no longer sparking each other off, so we were getting bored in the studio, which is not good for the music. And uh, I think uh, because all the time we'd really enjoyed making the music. There'd hardly ever been a period when we didn't actually enjoy the music, you know? And it just got a bit boring for all of us, and it was showing, you know? And uh, it just sort of came to a head, I think, and that was the main reason. Which of the other three original Beatles do you feel closest to as a friend right now? Well, I, I can never pick one out as more of a friend than the other, because we were all so close for so long. 
I see more of Ringo because he comes to the States a lot, and I can't leave because of the immigration. So physically, and maybe mentally too, I'm closer to Ringo at this period because he's here and because he's a nice guy, you know. But I, I really get on with them all. You know, we're all good friends, and I've seen quite a lot of Paul. I've hardly seen any of George, but I, no doubt I'll see him when he comes riding through America next next month, I think it is. And uh, we're just good friends, as they say in the trades. <laughs> Do you feel the, uh, the peace efforts you and Yoko exerted back in the uh, late 60s, early 70s, paid off with any positive results? Well, uh, you know, journalists and DJs, are, I guess you're always looking for some, you know, sort of kind of figure or quotation to put on something that's happened. I think that uh, everybody who made gestures towards peace contributed one way or another, however subtly, towards a better world. Even expressing the idea, I think, is better than not expressing it. And I'll always believe that, and I still do, you know? Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that's my feeling about it. I, I never was under an illusion that because John and Yoko or anybody else said, let's have peace, that the next morning peace would be declared. But I think if we don't make a statement about our feelings, then uh, I think nothing will ever go towards peace, you know? I mean, if people that want it never say it, then the uh, warmonger will always presume that everybody doesn't, everybody's not interested in peace. So I think it's just to put the idea out that yes, people are interested in it. And of course, we weren't the only ones, and uh, there's still a lot of, you know, a lot of people are peaceniks, including myself. I'm still, I still believe in that. How to do it, I don't know. I'm only one human being, you know. Have you written any other books? No, I haven't. Uh, the main, the only kind of writing apart from songwriting I do now is usually letters to friends and things like that, which are usually pretty zany, if that's the right word for it. And maybe one day I'll stick them all together with a few drawings. I still draw. But I haven't actually sat down to make another in his own right, you know, mm -hmm. published in 1964, I believe. John, probably the uh, another question that's asked of you several times, and, uh, well, by golly, I'm, I'm interested. I know uh, a lot of the people listening right now at WDGY are interested. Is there any chance at all the original Beatles will ever get together professionally again? Uh, well, that's another thing about... You know, like, I'll end up living in Canada, but uh, I don't see why not, is my answer to that. Now, what, how that would, uh, in what form it would manifest itself, I don't know, but it, it's more likely to happen on recording, you know, because we've all each recorded with at least one of the others during the last three years, and we've each recorded with lots of other people, you know, superstars and non-superstars. And uh, I, it, it seems quite reasonable that we might get in the studio and make some music together, because now it might be interesting. But uh, it's all up in the air, and the four of us haven't got together for one reason or another, but mainly to do with immigration, because George and Paul also have problems now and then getting in and out of, the, of America. And so it, uh, the atmosphere hasn't been too conducive, because we've never been able to get four in a room. But uh, it's not impossible, but I don't to start a rumor that they're getting back together again, you know, because there's, there's nothing in the wind. There's I no just say it's, it's quite possible, and why not? Okay, John, I think that uh, pretty well wraps it up. I, uh, okay, you want to do the promo. Right, I didn't want to jump in and jump on top of you that much, because like I mentioned, I want to keep them all kind of separate questions, and so if I wasn't responding to yeah, I understand you, you know, what you were doing. Yeah. That way I can just end it and boom, we can present them each as a, a separate vignette. Great. Boom right into a track from Walls and Bridges, if you don't right. mind. Right. <laughs> uh, I tell you, if you got a pencil and paper, yeah. uh, I'll give you some some stuff just to, okay. to rip off, if you will. I know, I've got WDGY down, anyway. Okay. This is, these are the uh, yeah. two lines I want you to tackle right now. Okay. Uh, this is John Lennon. Yeah, that and, one I know. And, right. And WDGY is music radio. And WDGY is music. It's quite hard to say WDGY, isn't it? Music yes. Music radio. WDGY. Okay, if I do that one first, then you give me the next one. Okay. Okay, ready? 
Go. Hi, this is John Lennon, and WDGY is Music Radio. Super. All right. Do yeah. the same same thing with John Lennon. Yeah. And WDGY is number one. Okay. Hi, this is John Lennon, and WDGY is number one. Rock on. Super. Okay.